Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome back to my channel. All right, y'all. This is Cheryl Arlette Hubbard Walker. And uh, welcome to my Accounting for Real channel. And um, today, uh, well, I just have here a little snack while I'm doing my little um, tutorials. Uh, this is a uh, La La Yogurt Smoothie. It's a La La Yogurt Smoothie. These are real good. Um, made with real fruit. Uh, la La, yes, La La Yogurt Smoothie. And uh, has a lot of vitamins and minerals and it's very healthy. So I have this. I'll do, well, I'll do my, oh, I, I am doing my video. And also these are some uh, blueberries. Blueberries are healthy for you. So... Blueberries, so yeah, some blueberries. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Mm. Uh, good. And uh, you don't have to uh, eat a lot of unhealthy snacks, but and blueberries, and also these are good when you're cooking. Um, uh, these in your food, and uh, they're good for cooking and baking. So, these are some blueberries. Mm hmm. Yeah. Mm hmm. That's my yogurt smoothie. Shake it up a little bit. And that's our probiotic. Mm hmm. Probiotics. Very nice. Mm. Okay. Um, let me get started. First, I want to start out just with a few, a few terms. And first, I have uh, Albert Einstein. Einstein was a German-born theoretical physicist, one of the two pillars of modern physics. His work is also known for its influence on the philosophy of science. He received the Nobel, uh, Nobel, uh, let me say, he received the Nobel Prize. I guess it's a Peace Prize. I guess it's a Nobel, where said the Nobel Prize? He received the Nobel Prize in physics. 1921. So, and then it said the formula, oh, and he published his formula, E equals MC uh, to the second power. So, e, e is energy equals mass uh, squared, two squared. Um, and then that's the formula. So, that's, that's the formula that he, he uh, um, invented. And then it says, uh, he wrote more than 300 scientific papers, 150 non-scientific non works. He taught the um, theoretical physics. He taught theoretical physics for one year. And a lot of people don't know that Einstein, he was very smart and intelligent, but at the same time, uh, he didn't talk right away. He was, I think it was like two, two years old before he started talking. Because he said he was slow to talk. And also, a lot of people don't know that he played the violin for a while. And um, and when you see his pictures online, you can see that um, he never combed his hair that much. His hair was always sort of like, you know, not like mine, but sort of up in the air all the way around. And um, another thing, he loved to smoke. He was born in Germany, March 14, 14. 1879, and um, he went to the school of Leopold Lup uh, Gymnasium. In 1905, he obtained his doctor's degree. So he, he had his doctor's degree in 1905. Excuse me. In 1909, he became professor extraordinary at uh, Zunrich. In 1911, he became another professor of another school, uh, Thorn, 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 Thorn Trio Physics. 
at the at the pro at the pray. He became German citizen. He became a German citizen in 1914, and he married. He or remained in Berlin until 1933. So, um, Einstein. Let me see what else I have on Einstein. Oh, Einstein realized the inadequacies of Newtonian mechanics and his special theory of relativity uh, stemmed from an attempt to reconcile the laws. He contributed to statistical mechanics by his development of the quantum theory of a, a, a monotonic gas and also accomplished valuable work in connection with uh, atomic tra transition. So he was responsible for his uh, special theory of relativity and general theory of relativity. And then it says, uh, theory, uh, his investigation based on his theory of relativity, it says uh, he also invented another theory and in, in invested investigations on the theory of, of the Brownian, Brownian movement. So that was another theory. Theory of relativity, uh, theory of general relativity, and the theory of Brownian movement. So that was another theory. Or the theory of Brownian movement. Uh, the evolution 1938 of physics. And that was one of the um, evolution 1938 of physics. I think that was one of the papers that he he uh, wrote on. And he also had non-scientific works. Uh, so his non-scientific works were a paper called Wild War, Wild War, 1933. Another paper, My Philosophy, 1934. Uh, out, if, out of my later years, or out of the later years, 1950. So he received, honor, he received an honorary doctorate degree in science, medicine, and philosophy from uh, European and American universities. He, he was married, he got married in 1907, and then he, did, he dissolved his marriage in 1919, and he then married his cousin. Really? <laughs> really? So that was uh, Albert Einstein. So he was famous for his uh, theory of relativity, theory of general relativity, and um, his uh, his uh, physics, uh, I guess you call it a what they call it right here. It says a mass mass equivalence mass equivalence formula, E equals m c squared to the second power. So he was famous for that in his in his theory of relativity, theory of general relativity, and then the other uh, the other relativity was the Brownian. The Browning, uh, theory of Browning movement, 1926. Okay, next I have uh, Sir Isaac Newton. So this is Albert Einstein. And just some of the stuff I wrote on. I just wasn't able to get everything on this. Albert Einstein. Mm -hmm. And so next I have uh, Sir Isaac Newton. Sir Isaac Newton. Sir Isaac Newton. Um, he was uh, born in England. He invented gravity, so he was born in England. Math. He was a mathematician, physicist, astronomer, the theologian, and author who is widely. Uh, he was widely recognized as one of the most influential scientists of all time, and as a key figure in the scientific revolution. He was. Um, he was elected a fellow of Trinity College in 16, 1667 uh, and a professor of mathematics of uh, 1669. He lectured most he lectured most years until 1990 until 16 or oh, I'm putting them in, I'm putting them in the 1900s. He lectured most year, most years until 1696. Uh, elected uh, a fellow, he was elected a fellow of the Royal Society of London in 1671. And okay, uh, Nuri 
Lou Reed's uh, recent work. So it says Lou Reed rec uh, recent work on options and light by the English uh, physicists Robert Boyle and Robert Hooke. He also studied both the mathematics and the physics of the French philosophy and scientist René Descartes. He investigated the uh, ref refraction of light by a glass uh, prism. Newton discovered uh, measurable mathematical patterns in the phenomenon of color. He found white light to be a mixture of infinity, uh, very uh, colored, very colored rays. Each ray definable, definable, each ray definable by the angle through which it is uh, refracted refracted or entering or leaving a given a given transparent medium he correlated the notion with his study of the in, interference colors i don't know if it's color because i'm going spell out c-o-l-o-r-s they spell it c-o-l-o-u-r colors c-o-l-c-o-l-o-u-r-s colors uh, this film for for uh example of oil and water or soap bubbles using a simple technique of extreme acuity to measure uh, the think the thickness of uh, such film he held that light consisted of streams of uh, minute particles okay from his experiment he could infer the magnitudes of the transparent Corpus 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 forming the surfaces of uh, bodies. Mm -hmm. Corpus holes of bodies to to their uh, dimensions. Okay, so so interested with uh, uh, with the white light as to reflect uh, selectivity. The different of observed colors of those surfaces. Newton's work, uh, Newton's work uh, in mechanics, was accepted at once in Britain and universally after a half century. Uh, since then, it has been ranked among humanity's greatest achievements in abstract thought. Newton left a mass of manuscripts on the subjects of alchemy and chemistry then closely related topics yep then also some other closely related so in other words he left a whole lot of um he left a whole lot of manuscripts behind see he said he left or uh, newton left a mass a whole lot mass means a large amount of manuscripts on the subject of alchemy and chemistry so he was very good at chemistry and uh things of that nature so Newton sought understanding of the Newtonian and structure of all matter. So Newton sought understanding. So he was dealing with, he dealt with matter. And um, it says, matter formed from the solid, messy, hard, massy, hard, uh, impenet impenetrable, movable particles. That he believed God had created. Newton owned more books on humanity, humanistic learning than than on uh, science. Newton published an edition of Geographic uh, Generalist by the German ge geographer Ber Berklitus, Berklitus in, in 1672. His own letters on op tears appeared in print from 1672 to 1676. He published print. He published a paper called uh, uh, Principia Principia Optics in 1704. So he had a whole lot of uh, papers that he published and book and books that he wrote. Uh, let's see what else. I think that's all for Newton. Ancient of uh, it says uh, the system of the world, system of the world, 
He published a book called The Sister of Book or Paper, The System of the World, 17, 1728. Okay, now I have uh so this was that was Sir Isaac Newton. So that was Sir Isaac Newton. Let me make sure, okay. Okay, Sir Isaac Newton. Yeah, that was Sir Isaac Newton. Sir Isaac Newton. Sir Isaac Newton. So that's Sir Isaac Newton. Sir Isaac Newton. Sir Isaac Newton. Okay. So. So next I have uh, oh Beethoven. Beethoven was a German composer and pianist. Beethoven, a German composer and pianist. And he was a crucial figure in the transitions between classical and romantic era in classical music. He is considered to be uh, one of the greatest composers of all time. Beethoven, considered to be one of the greatest composers of all time. That's Beethoven. Okay, uh, he created a symphony called Symphony Five, and it's, it is it is and it was a beloved classic, one of the greatest musical uh, genres of all time. His innovative compositions, his innovative compositions, uh, his innovative compositions combine vocals and instrument. Widening the scope of sonata, sonata symphony, concerto, and uh, quartets, quartets. He is the crucial transitional figure connecting the classical and romantic ages of Western music. One of Beethoven's best known works among modern audiences is his symphony number no. five. Symphony number five, and then he had number eighteen. Oh no, that's eighteen ten. Number five, in eighteen ten, Beethoven completed four Elise, although it was not published until forty years after his demise. So he created a whole lot of uh, musical. I guess it was something like uh, you know, if you have your. Uh, you know, orchestra or something like that, and they playing the symphony, the different uh, classical music. So that's Beethoven. Beethoven was Beethoven was one of the um, he was one of the he was, he is the crucial transitional figure connecting the classical and romantic ages of Western uh, music. He was. Beethoven, one of Beethoven's best known works was a modern, uh, for, you know, that he created for modern modern audiences was Symphony No. 5. Okay, then we have uh, Plato. Plato was a Greek philosopher. We already, then we also have Aristotle and Socrates. Uh, Plato, a Greek philosopher who uh, also had a major scientific influence on the Middle Ages. Plato was a a uh, foundational figure of Western science, math, and philosophy. And, so, and his writings, he had, he had various writings, famous writings, uh, like uh, he wrote a book called The Republic. Then we have Aristotle. Aristotle was a pupil of Plato and a part of Plato's uh, Anth Anth Anthonian Anthonian Academy for over 20 years. Aristotle had a major influence on the development of Western philosophy. That's the same as uh, Plato. They both were uh, Greek philosophers as well as Socrates. And uh, it says um, Aristotle had a major influence on the development of Western philosophy and science. Writing on physics, biology, and metaphysics and logic. So he wrote on physics, physics, biology, metaphysics, and logic. So that was Aristotle. 
Let's go. Here's something else about Plato. Plato, he was born uh, 428. 428 to they say 428 to 347 BC. In his in his written dialogue, he conveys and he conveys and expanded on the ideas and techniques of his of his teacher Socrates. So, so Socrates was Plato's teacher. So they, they became good friends. So um they said Plato, ancient Greek, he was an ancient Greek philosopher, student of Socrates, and founder of the Academy. So Plato, uh, Plato's writings date from, uh, so in other words, Plato wrote, I think it was like three, three, um, three writings. So Socrates was, um, Socrates was a Greek philosopher too. So in other words, philosophers are, are people that, in other words, you have a philosophy about this. You believe in this, or you may believe in that. You don't believe in this or that. And you might believe in something different that someone else believes in. So Socrates was, he was, uh, well, basically he got in trouble for, you know, some of his writings and some of his speech. Some of his, um, in other words, when he spoke, they felt that he was corrupting the youth. So he had to go, so Socrates had to go on trial. And what Plato did after Socrates, uh, after Socrates uh, passed away, uh, Plato wrote these papers, and so I gave, I guess those papers gave an account of, um, uh, you know, the uh, events that led up to Socrates' demise. So he was, he got in trouble. Socrates was got in trouble for. Um, Corrupting the youth, they said allegedly corrupting the youth. So they had him uh, drink uh, the, uh, the fatal hemlock, and he had to go to trial and all that. So Plato, he wrote the papers on that, and so the papers that he wrote, he wrote. Um, I think the one of them was called the Apology. One of them was called the Apology. Yeah, the first one was the Apology, and he wrote. It was called yeah the uh, e, e, U, e the Apology, and the Crypto. So they were all pertaining to the, um, the situation with, uh, Socrates. So Socrates was allegedly, uh, cited for, uh, corrupting the youth. So his, his speeches and his writings. So then he... You know, so Plato wrote on those, on those, you know, those, those incidents that led up to uh, Socrates. Uh, so Socrates, Plato was Socrates' student. Plato's writings date from, uh, from uh, after, right there you go. So it dates from after Socrates' trial. Plato's uh, metaphysic and physics and epistemology. Uh, yeah, they have been originally influenced by uh, pre-Socratic pre-Socratic thinkers. So, in other words, people pre-Socratic thinkers. I guess that mean, meant that uh, those were thinkers before Socrates. So maybe they had the same philosophy that uh, Socrates had. So I assume pre-Socratic thinkers and. So it says, uh, I'm not going to read all this about Plato, because I wrote a whole lot of stuff about Plato, so I'm going to move over, but Plato uh, and Socrates, they, they were pretty good friends, so Plato wrote those dialogues, it was, it was three of them, that's what it said, three groups, Socratic, they called it, he called, Plato called them the uh, Socratic dialogues, so he called them, one of them the uh, Euthyphron, e e e e e Apology, and the Crypto. So I guess the Apology, when he wrote the Apology, they, that meant that um, uh, Socrates probably was apologizing because he was allegedly charged with corrupting the youth of Athens. So, so Plato wrote those three writings.
pertaining to uh, that. So that was that on Plato and Socrates. And, and Plato and Socrates, I learned about them in my uh, my one of my courses at uh, Strayer University. So I think that well, that was the last one. Let me see. So I had a uh, we have uh, I I talked about Albert Einstein. Uh, oh yeah, Beethoven, and his name actual name is Ludwig van Beethoven. Ludwig uh, Beethoven. Mm-hmm. And Plato. We talked about Plato. We talked about Aristotle, Socrates. Okay, so those are those. And now I want to get into a little bit about uh, business. So, okay, so on my channel, I have been, um, on my channel, I have been uh, mostly talking about uh, accounting. So, um, accounting, um, accounting, accounting is just one of the aspects of business. So, First of all, let me see. Let me see. Um, I can explain what accounting does. See, an accountant performs financial functions related to the collection, accuracy, recording, analysis, and presentation of a business organization or company's financial operations. Collection and maintenance of financial data. An accountant in a smaller business will collect financial data. Entry and report gener uh, report generation. An accountant can be anything from a simple bookkeeper to a strategic advisor, interpreting financial information for senior senior decision makers in the business. So, accountant performs financial functions related to the collection, accuracy, recording, analysis, and presentation of a business organization or company's financial operations. So in other words, they collect, they maintain, they collect and they maintain the financial data. So they usually do that through the income statements, balance sheets, and a statement of owner's equity, um, and a statement of cash flow. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is so good. Mm -hmm. Blueberries. So, I don't know if you can see the name on there, but they they, they say it's good for you. Mm -hmm. And um, and this is my um yogurt smoothie. Yogurt smoothie. So. Mm -hmm. So that's a that's what accountant does. Accountant performs financial functions related to the collection, accuracy, recording. In other words, recording, recording it through uh, income statements, balance sheets, balance sheets, statements of statements of owners' equity, statement of cash flows, and accounting uh, when they record uh, accounting data. It has to be accurate, so that's why they say collection of accuracy, recording, analysis, and presentation of the business organization. So, in other words, they analyze the data. In other words, if they have Say for instance, they they have uh they have to they have to analyze the data because they have to look at the um in other words accounts receivables coming in accounts payables they have to separate they have to separate the the uh the information that when it when it when they you know when they analyze it if they working for a company they working in an accounting department they have to see. Which I well they know they they actually know they should know anyway what items go, what items go on the income statement what items go on the um, balance sheet so in other words assets minus liabilities equals owner's equity so that is the uh, balance sheet so assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity so when they look at all the assets for that particular company that they're working for and uh, they have to equal on the other side, the right hand side, they have the liabilities plus the owner's equity that has to equal the assets on the left side. So they have to analyze all the assets within their company 
All the liabilities within that company, all the owner's equity. So when they add that together, assets have to match up. When you add the uh, liabilities plus the owner's equity, they have to match up with your assets. And then they have the income statement. So then the income statement, you have the um, revenues minus expenses. So you have your revenues minus your expenses. You add up all your revenues. So, you know, the county department will add up all the revenues and add up all the expenses and just subtract the suspenses, expenses. Uh, subtract, subtract these expenses from the revenues and that's where they get the net income. So I'm going to analyze. So like I said earlier, uh, uh, previously, excuse me, uh, accounting is just one aspect of, uh, your business organization or, yeah, or your company, uh, or even if you're working for another company, but just I'm just gonna look at it as is. I'll look at it as though it's my business. So um, I'm gonna be talking about my business. In other words, I have uh, I have a skincare business, and I'm running a skin skincare business. And um, so I found my niche. My niche is to sell um, uh, skincare products for. Um, normal skin and sensitive skin so this is just a little chart that i created it's just a little you know little notes that i'll be taking so in other words my business um I'm, I'm marketing uh skincare products for normal skin and sensitive skin so that's my niche my niche is normal skin and sensitive skin those are the type of uh products that i'll be offering so then i want to know um who is going to be so? Who is going to be my target market? So that's those are the things that you have to ask when you run in the when you run in the business. See Cheryl's uh, skincare, Cheryl's skincare uh, LLC. Yeah, see Cheryl's skincare LLC. So as I said, accounting is just one aspect of your business. You have to know. You have a county department. You have um. Then you have to have, you know, you, you, who are you going, who are, who are you going to target your products to? You dealing with accounting. Then that's that's one area. Then I want to know who am I going to market my products to? I have to be concerned with, uh, I have to be concerned with marketing, advertising, well, actually advertising, marketing, and promoting, and then also my target market. And then. Because it said, I must know my target audience, and it says uh, what type of business and what and what area. See what type of business business and what area. So I say that up here, which will be my skincare. I want to market skincare products for sensitive skin and normal skin. See products for normal skin. See Cheryl skincare products. Normal skin and uh. Normal skin and sensitive skin. So, in other words, once I found, I have once I have found my niche, and I'm selling these skincare products. Uh, I'm selling uh, normal. I'm selling products for normal skin, sensitive skin. So that's my niche. Then my target market. Uh, my target market. I may sell to. Say for instance, I'm selling to. Uh, my target market could be. I say 20 year olds. 20 to 60 and then also 20 to 60 year old then i might want to also target uh, college students so sometimes uh you can have more than one target market so what if you what if you have a target and you want to segment your um see target market you can segment you can segment your um your target your target market in other words you can segment your target market see right there say so you can segment you can segment. So in other words, where is it written? You can segment. Where is it written that you have to have one target market? You can have two or three target markets. In other words, I can market to, like I said, 20 to 60 year olds. Uh, then I also can target uh, college students. I can target um, older people too if I want to say, uh, 
45 to 85. So depending on your target market, who you have to basically find out who your target market is. You can target more than one. You can have one target market or you have two or three target markets. So that's a way of two or three target markets. That's a way of uh, uh, generating more revenue. That is a way of gener generating more revenue. So that's that one. So to generate more. And then also, uh, once you find out your target market, then you have to find out where where are you going to target them at? Are you going to target them on social media? You have uh, email marketing. You have social media mar social media marketing. You have uh, uh, internet, uh, Facebook, YouTube, um, and uh, Twitter, and then you have email email marketing. So, say for instance, you you figure you know you sell in like my company, Cheryl Skincare Products. I'm trying to market to sensitive people with sensitive skin and people with normal skin. And I already mentioned my age groups. What if I go on Facebook and I get no reaction? So if I if I if I go on Facebook and I keep on advertising and I'm sending out and I'm creating ads and uh, I'm posting and letting people know about my business, you know, the age group that I'm targeting, I'm targeting college students, I'm targeting um uh, 20 to 60 year olds, and I'm talking to 45 to 80 year olds. Once I uh, keep on posting and posting and posting, and what if I post on Facebook for so many, you know, months and weeks, uh, weeks and months and days, and then it turned out to be years, and I'm steady posting on Facebook, then and then I get no reaction. So my reality is, I would believe, you know. My target market, they don't even exist on Facebook because I, I, I didn't get any reaction on Facebook. So you can say, I want to advertise, advertise, market, and promote my business, but you still have to find out where your target market is. You can say, oh, I want to target, um, you know, like I said, you can have, you can segment your uh, target market and you can have more than one. In other words, more than one target market is a good way to go, but it's just that you have to find out where where your target market uh, customers are. Are they on Facebook? Are they on Twitter? Are they on YouTube? Are they on Instagram? You have to find out where they are. So the email marketing, that's very, that's good too. That's a good way. So once you find out where your, your target market uh, customers are, then you have to create you will, it would be good to create an email list. That way, you can email, you can email your potential customers and your long-time customers, and your regular customers. So, emailing them back and forth, letting them know, hey, I have a new product. I have a new product that's coming out. Uh, it would be great for you. I think you ought to try it. You're such a valued customer that um, I want to give you uh, forty percent off your first order. So, things like that. So that's that one, and then I have, uh, like I said, accounting is just one aspect of running a business. So you have to, in other words, you have to deal with your accounting department. I mean, the accounting department have to do their job. Then you have your uh, human resources department, and as I said, you have to concentrate on, uh, uh, you know, running your business. What is your niche? What is your target market? Are you gonna segment your market? Market. Uh, your target market are uh, you just gonna have one so how you gonna market advertise how you gonna market advertise and promote your business so accounting is just one aspect and accounting department is uh, it's good to concentrate on just the accounting department but it's so many there are so many aspects of uh, running a business that you have to um, be aware of then you also have your you know, you have your LLC, uh, you want to know, hey, should I have me an LLC? Should I start a corporation, a partnership, uh, or, or, or sole proprietorship? So LLC, I was always told that LLC would be the best. LLC or a corporation, because those both, those two forms of businesses, uh, you are not, uh, you have limited liability. So LLC, that's what that is, limited liability company. 
So in other words, if you are sued, the company can be sued, the business name can be sued, but they can't, they cannot, <coughs> they cannot personally sue your, you and your personal assets. So they can't go into your personal bank accounts, your checking, your savings, or uh, whatever, you know, credit union accounts you have. So that's what that, so that's that. And I think that was it for those. <clears throat> and these just a few little counting terms that I have. It's just um, advertising, marketing, and just, you know, your accounts receivable. We got accounts receivables, accounts payable. So it's just a little, you know, accounts receivable, accounts payable. It's just uh, so sometimes I like to write these little things down instead of writing on the board all the time. And, um, you have uh, revenues and expenses, uh, that's the income statement, assets equals liabilities and owners of equity. So that's the um, balance sheet. So then we have um, uh, fixed costs. Fixed costs, uh, that's the cost that uh, that does not change. So right here we have the fixed costs. Fixed costs, costs that does not change because they fix whatever sales you have, it says uh, one that does, does not change with the volume of sales. <clears throat> so in other words, the volume of sales, that means, you know, how many, no matter, no matter how much you sell, the cost is still going to be the same. So then they also have, I didn't put it on here, but, uh, okay, it's not right here, the variable cost. So variable cost, I guess that'll be the opposite of the fixed cost. See, this is a fixed cost right here. Fixed cost. So, so, so the, so the uh, fixed cost does not change no matter what, what the volume is. But I guess the variable cost is the one that does change. Variable cost will change. And your variable cost would change, but your fixed cost would not change. So that's that. And I just have uh, just two, um, just a um, couple, uh, just two um, journal entries and two uh, ledger account entries. So this is Cheryl invested fifty thousand. Again, my business is called I'm selling suits and ties. So I invested fifty thousand in my business. So I invested fifty thousand in my business. So I want to um, debit my cash account fifty thousand, and then I want to credit credit owners equity. So this is the journal entry up here. So this is my suit and tie business. And then I come down here, and then I have um, cash. This is the ledger. I want to debit my cash and credit owners equity. So debit cash and credit on that. This is just a, a journal and a ledger uh, entry. So that's one. And then this one here says, in other words, I have my business. I'm running a suit and tie business. Uh, I already uh, found my niche and I know my target market. I might want to segment my marketing, uh, my target market. But I want to. I invested um, five hundred dollars into some, some some office supplies. I bought some office supplies, so I bought them on account. So I want to debit my office supplies five hundred, and I want to credit accounts payable five hundred. So, so that's what I did. It's just a uh, uh, the journal entry at the top, and then a ledger at the bottom. So the journal entry. So as I said, um, accounting, accounting books are very important. They have to be accurate. They have to be accurate. So, um, and then an accountant, they have to have a certain amount of time for, you know, training. So that is going to be, I think that was the last one. So like I said, business, my degree is business. So. And I know that accounting is just one aspect of uh, running a, uh, I say, I would say, uh, running a, 
running in, I would say running a, uh, I don't know if I want to say effective. I say, I would just say accounting is one of the aspects of running a, I would say, I could say effective, prosperous, effective, uh, effective, efficient. So efficient means you get things done in an efficient manner at a low cost. That's efficient. And effective, uh, when something is effective, then you get it done. Mean, you know, meaning that it's right. It's effective. Now, if you do something and you get it done, but things were wrong, then it wasn't effective. But you got it done, but it wasn't it was everything was all messed up and was it was wrong. Things were wrong, but being effective means you got it done at a lower cost. It was effective. It was efficient at a lower cost. It was effective. It went through and everything was accurate. Paperwork was right. And everybody was satisfied. So in business, accounting, as I said, is one aspect of this running the business. Because uh you have your accounting, you have to you have to market, advertise, promote. You have to find your niche. You have to uh, find your target market. And like I said, you can talk, you can segment uh, your target markets. You can have more than one target market. That's what segment segmentation means. So I want to segment my target markets. I want to, I want to, um, I want to target uh, more than just one one group of people. I want to target this group over here. I want to target this group over here. I want to target this group over here. That helps me bring in more revenues. So marketing, advertising, promoting. Uh, then you got your accounting departments. Accounting. You have your accounting paperwork. You have to have your uh, income statements, your balance sheets, your statement of owner's equity, statement of cash flows. All that stuff has to be accurate. And um, so business and so business is a lot of work. Then also you have to have the proper licenses. You have to have, in other words, you may choose your name. You have to, uh, you have, you choose your name for your business. Then you have to uh, take out a license just to even get that started. To choose the name. Then you have to have an operating license. And sometimes you have to have two or three different licenses to run a business. And if you're dealing with the food, if you're dealing in the food industry, industry, uh, then you have to have, uh, you have to go through the health department. They have to make sure you don't have, you know, your place is clean when you're serving food. Making products, mixing, mixing products, uh, hair products, skincare products. You have to go through the health department because they want to make sure that when you're mixing these items that you're not going to blow nothing up and you're not going to make nobody sick. And so it's a lot when you are uh, dealing with the food industry, making hair and skincare products, makeup, stuff like that. So. I thought about running a business. I had an LLC, but I was going to be mixing some. Uh, I wasn't going to mix them. Actually, I was going to buy my products from another company. And then I was going to sell them uh, in my business. So what they do, they make them. They make the products. Uh, it was a skin. She she does. I think she does skin care. Skin care products. And uh, she, do, she do skin care products and uh, hair products. And then she also makes uh, her own uh, homemade soap. Uh, she the business is called uh, Wholesale Natural Body Care. So she um yeah Wholesale Natural Body Care, and I ordered uh, somebody ordered some stuff for me uh, from them for Christmas for Christmas. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm so good. So. I ordered somebody ordered some stuff from her, from her company for me for my business, and um, but I decided not to go forward. I had a, I had a LLC, but I shut it down because I wasn't ready. But I said maybe later on. But I was just, I just went over a whole lot of things, things that business entails. Everything has to be in order. Your business paperwork, your licenses. Yep, you have to have you have to have the business name because you want to protect your business. So you don't want nobody else to have your business name, and or even you have their name and then you end up trying, you know, they end up trying to sue you. So if they end up trying to sue you, that's what you don't want. So like I said, business has and these are just you know, it's part of your accounting books. How you have to keep your accounting books. So I'm not an accountant, but 
I did take accounting in school, and my degree is business business and uh, information systems. So, like I said, you have to have the right business licenses. Uh, you have to have you choose your name. You don't want to get sued. Don't want nobody to sue you, and you don't want to have to worry about trying to go sue nobody else because they have your name, uh, your business name. So, uh, uh, I think I'm gonna close out today class and I want to say thanks for joining me so I just wanted to touch base on a lot of business uh, aspects of my my channel because accounting I do accounting and I do the little tutorials but my degree is business I really I have a bachelor's in business administration and accounting was just one course that I took so I want to focus on uh, some business uh, items, you know, some business courses um, or some business information. I just want to maybe provide some business information on my channel and not, you know, accounting too. Accounting is, is all right, but I do also want to provide you all with some business information. So if you can subscribe to my channel and just let me know uh, what type of information that you will want from me and I don't mind uh providing it because uh um yep i just want to provide some uh great content for you interesting content and um later on i will be i don't have a phone right now i would love to do some of my my videos uh on my cell phone but um i don't have my phone right now something happened to my phone but i would be getting me another phone but um once I get my phone, I'll be shooting some videos with my phone. So, I'm going to close out right now. And I'll say, uh, thanks for joining me. Thanks for joining my accounting channel. And as I said, I will be doing some, uh, bringing, you, bringing you all some information some from a business aspect. So, thanks for joining me. And I want to say, please subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to my channel, and if you want to leave a message down below, let me know what type of information you will be interested in, and just try to, you know, help me out a little bit, and I don't mind doing research, I'll do, I don't mind doing research, and, and um, so I can provide you with that information that you want, and also I do research on my own, so I'm going to close out now, and see what type of information I can get together for my next video, and I also want to try to get outside, Go down by the water and maybe shoot some videos down there. So, all right. Thanks for joining my channel. And I want to say you all have a good one. I'm going to see you next time. Same place, same channel. Cheryl, Cheryl's Accounting for Real channel. You all have a good one.